Welcome to an all new episode of the Giants Huddle podcast brought to you by PSEG, energy efficiency for game time and anytime. Visit PSEG.com slash Giants for discounts, rebates, and home energy assessments. Welcome to the Giants Huddle, day one of Giants rookie minicamp. My name is Madeline Burke. It's a pleasure to be joined by dear friend and football savant from Football Game Plan and CBS Sports, Emery Hunt. Thanks for stopping by. Well, I appreciate you having me. I was just in the area and I was like, let me see what the Giants up to. My might as well, right? Might as well pop on over and check out the 2023 rookie class. Day one on the field. Obviously, there's you know limits to what can be done with just this rookie class and this rookie group. But what did you see out there that, that stood out to you? It's a lot of what we saw last year in Dable's first year and Wink's first year. It was a lot of length in the secondary. So it's just impressive to see this is their MO. This is what they want to stockpile the back end with. And also, you saw a lot more athleticism at the receiver position. And again, this is rookie mini camp, so you're going to have a bunch of guys out there just running around, running routes and things of that nature. So you can clearly see the athleticism increase mm -hmm. from last year's group to where we are right now. It's interesting, too, because in the pre-draft process, Joe Shane, he had a press conference talking about how one of the things that they learned as a scouting department is how to scout defensive players for Wink's system. And it seems like you pointed out, like they've started to say, okay, this is the type of player that fits in this system. Offensively as well, you know, scouting players for that offense, for that style of play. And you, you're just looking at the build and the make of a lot of these guys that they brought in, you know, Eric Gray, the running back, we were looking at him too. And he's built like, he's a, he's a thick guy out there and he's got legs similar to another running back we've seen in this organization. <laughs> yeah. He's very thick. And, and there was a lot of thick guys that run back but what's unique about those uh backs is the fact that they all have the ability to catch football mm -hmm. and we know that's an integral part to this offense so you have guys that can handle the tackle to tackle you know physicality that you need with the girth that they have uh, by how they're built but also with the ability to get in and out of their cuts we saw we saw many guys win one-on-one -on -one routes today versus linebackers and safeties so it's making your offense and defense interchangeable mm -hmm. because if saquon has to get a breather the next guy that can come in can do a lot of the same things and helps keep your offense on pace, help keeps your defense on pace. Because we talk about the length and how, you know, you look at a lot of guys they, they brought in, um, they're able to play corner and safety. Mm -hmm. So now you have a positionless secondary. Hey, we need you to play slot this time and you can go and do that and do it really well. So that's the purpose of why they did that. And it's good to see it play out how it has so far, right. even on day one. Well, and then you look at, too, the way that we heard from some of these guys coming to the podium after practice. You know, Giants newly drafted quarter, cornerback Trey Hawkins, cornerback Javarius Owens, Geo. Um, these are guys, you know, you're familiar with because you grind the tape on on everyone in this. <laughs> but um you know, with what they bring in the, at this time of the year, how much can these guys really show? Not much. And that's a great question because it's hard when you are out here for two days on, on site mm -hmm. and then you have a bunch of guys that are competing for spots. And so you may have maybe one rep out of a period. Mm -hmm. You know, some guys may not even get any reps in certain periods like 707 or whatnot. So it's hard to show. Mm -hmm. You just are glad that you have the luxury of being a draft pick. But if you're an undrafted guy, you kind of have to go above and beyond. And you talked about this at practice when you said, you know, guys have to really show up in the things outside of the field. Like mm -hmm. how do you do in the classroom, how attentive they are, the type of questions they ask. And that's something where you can really stand out. Yeah. And Brian Dable has even acknowledged like that's what they look for at this time of year, right? What kind of questions? How much are they retaining information? How much are they integrating into the culture? And it's hard, you know, there's not a lot of this 53 guys that make the roster. And if you're trying to make a roster from this position, it's an uphill battle. But these guys work hard and they, they show up and and mentioning, you know, some of the draft picks that were out there that we saw. Um, Jalen Hyatt, the wide receiver out of Tennessee, third round draft pick. He was asked at the podium afterwards after practice, you know, hey, a lot of people expected you to go a little bit sooner. What did you think? He said, well, hey, the Giants traded up to get me still, even if it wasn't the third round. Now he's just got a lot to prove. People were asking about questions that had come up about his route tree. What do you make of him as a receiver? I love speed. Speed is something you can't coach or teach. You either have it or you don't. And right. so when you have that speed and, you know, you're watching him run and it's just effortless. And especially when you think about the crosswinds and that we'll see here at, at MetLife, he'll fly right out of the stadium. Like that's how much he can take the top off the defense. And when you have someone that is able to get down the field quickly and play fast, mm -hmm. it opens up everything else for everybody else. So you put a fast guy in a slot that can get deep. Now you have to worry about how you play umbrella co coverage. How can you designate zone? Do we rotate to his side? 
Because if you do, now you leave other guys one on one, and they were able to you know stockpile talent this offseason, mm-hmm. and getting guys like a Darren Waller to come in and and win those one on one matchups. So that speed does more than just you know run past somebody. It really lifts the top up off the defensive coverage. And it's so interesting the way the Giants draft unfolded this year too. I mean, we've talked about this so much ad nauseum, but the fact that the first three picks between uh, Banks, JMS, and and Hyatt, like these all could have been first round draft picks for this team. It really worked out in their favor. Um, but speaking of the first round draft pick, Deontay Banks, I know. He, look at you smiling. <laughs> look at you smiling. I know Emery is you're big on <laughs> Banks right here. What do you like about this guy? Attitude. And yeah. give me those guys that look like they like fighting. That's yeah. what I like about Banks and what I like about what he brings to the table, especially at that position. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to get beat. No one in this world has the confidence of a cornerback because you talk trash all day. Right. You're going to get beat and you come back the next play and still talk trash. We <laughs> laughed about it every time we're at yeah. practice where the ball was overthrown, yeah. yet the cornerback stands up and says, incomplete. Like, bro, you had nothing to do with that. <laughs> nothing but to do with you that. have the arrogant confidence of saying, yeah, it's because I was here. That's what he does. That's what Banks does. And Banks is someone that combines everything that you look for, the length, the athleticism, uh-huh. the confidence, and pair him up with, with Wink Martindale, it's like a match made in heaven. So that's why I'm so excited about not only the player, because I love his attitude, but the fit mm-hmm. along with what he brings to the table. And you said that this man could be America's corner, yeah, the, way the, that, the way that his vibe is. The attitude. Think about how Americans travel abroad. Yeah. We are just like Deontay Banks. <laughs> like we are, Everything needs to be like how we have it back home. Banks is that type of guy that you have out there in the corner. I love his attitude. I love it. And his trash talk, too. He brings <laughs> it. He backs it up. But I do appreciate, too, because it's not this, like, it's not like the Dylan Brooks of trash talk, right? <laughs> it is, you know, he was talking about it at the podium, and he said, hey, listen, I am looking forward to bringing it. But he said, I've got to make my mark first. Like, he is very adamant of, like, saying, I know that I'm going to talk that trash, but I'm also wanting to make it a priority to back it up with my play. And that balance, too. Some guys, some guys just talk it. That was a cornerback being humble. Because yeah. all of that's going to go out the window. The first PPU he gets at practice, yeah. not the game, practice, he'll break with pass, and we won't hear the, the, the end of Deontay Banks. We'll not hear the end of it, but we love that. We love that confidence. You need that confidence coming in as a rookie in this system, in this league as well. You know, when you got two days, two days of rookie mini camp right here, it's just a little bit to like shake the nerves off, get used to the facility, get used to get going around here. What do you think the most important thing for these young guys to kind of take from this experience is? Understand how precious the opportunity is. Mm -hmm. Because, and I've always told people this that I've talked to throughout the whole scouting process. If if you have a helmet on that Mm -hmm. has an NFL logo on it, you made the NFL. That in and of itself is an accomplishment. So it can be overwhelming for these guys to be out here and think, man, I'm wide receiver 35 and I'm not going to get the opportunity. But just... Try to work on your craft individually, Mm -hmm. get better, and then take this experience and build on it. You know, this is the start of your journey. It's not the destination. It's not the end. And, yeah, it may not end up for you for some of these guys that may end up not making the roster or getting into camp. But just embrace every part of this opportunity because that's what it is. And it it can help you learn from that and build on that as you move forward. Yeah, absolutely. And, we've you know, we've talked about some of these draft picks. And the the draft picks are the people that I think the the casual Giants fan are going to have their eye on going into the season at this point of the year. Okay, how's this guy doing in camp? How's this guy doing in camp? But are there guys that kind of stood out to you that you saw out on that field? I mean, that you were like, oh, that's interesting. They brought this guy in. This is somebody who stood out to me. Undrafted free agent Deontay Johnson Mm -hmm. of Toledo. Um, tremendous linebacker. Now, at Toledo, he played both outside and inside backer, and he has that flexibility to float between the two because he's a terrific blitzer. Mm-hmm. He's also someone that can do a great job in chasing a run going east and west. So now you say, okay, well, we have someone that can play both, kind of compare up with what they had last year and Darren Beavers, do some of the same things. Yeah. And it's like, wow, this guy can do a lot of these unique things. So special teams is going to be his, his door in, mm-hmm. his entryway, but I like what I saw from him athletically. And Alex Cook out of Washington, Versatile guy on the back end. Washington did a great job of cross-training their secondary. So guys may have to dip down in the slot and play that. They may have to play back deep, deep third or split uh, field safety look. So being able to do multiple things allows you then to enhance your chances to meet the team. Right. And the more you can do, especially in, you know, a defense as versatile as this one, an offense as versatile as this one, absolutely. Um, And, you know, talking about, too, some of these guys coming out of smaller schools, smaller programs, that's not necessarily a hindrance. 
you know, how would you articulate to the casual football fan that you don't necessarily need to come out of like an SEC powerhouse to make it in this league? First of all, Trey Hawkins came from Old Dominion, which is now in the Sun Best Conference. So, mm. you know, that's probably why he got drafted because he played in the Sun Belt. So when you think about coming from these small schools, we've mm-hmm. seen and this is this dates back to, you know, years once they made the 85 scholarship limit at right. FBS, you start to see the trickle down. And now when you look at where we are now, 2023, combining with the transfer portal, guys are going everywhere to play. And these coaches that are at these smaller schools are usually there the entire career of the player. So they get the same voice, they develop more. So they get a more polished guy coming out the small school ranks Mm -hmm. than we've seen before. So that's why it doesn't matter what helmet they wear or uniform they wear. These are the guys that are able to, hey, step in right away. And we think about the first two weeks of college football is all these FBS versus FCS games that we see Mm -hmm. guys are getting tape on power five competition or group of five competition. So we've not reached a point where we don't even worry about where a guy came from. Can you play? Can you do it? And a lot of these guys that are coming from these small schools have shown they can. Absolutely. They wouldn't be here if they didn't. Right. This is, you know, the guys making these decisions aren't just willy nilly in it. Um, And, you know, out here on the field, day one of rookie mini camp, you got two days of this and then you've got some OTAs and then regular mini camp coming up. What are you watching for as this off season program evolves? I want to see the speed pick up Mm -hmm. on offense. Uh, we noticed this last year, and I want to say it was when they had the the scrimmage here against the Jets, uh, the practice. We kind of saw those guys. The, the passing game started, you know, with at the time they had a receiver that was here that's not here anymore, but he was really baking that secondary of the Jets. And it was yeah. like, hey, if this is the offense, they can be, you know, a speed type of offense, catch and run type of offense. So now with additional weapons back and your second year in this offensive system, mentally you're going to be faster. And they've added – speed with that mental speed so now we should see an even faster offense and that's what i'm more excited to see you can't really get a good gauge on wings defense without pads on right but you know what you're going to get from wings defense right, right. but yeah. i want to see the speed on offense pick up and i'm excited to see how they do that now that they mentally have it down pat but also with the speed that they've added at all across the board right absolutely because that's what that's the biggest part of this time of year too the skill position players the passing game the running game, that speed, you're not really going to be seeing a lot from John Michael Schmidt, the second round cor- right. center that was drafted because there's not much that you can do without pads on. Um, but it will be interesting to see, number one, the practices get faster, the installs get faster, the reaction times get faster, and this growth of this game as a team. And plus, the Giants are getting back some players that were out injured. Wandale Robinson, Darian Beavers, guys that went down early last year that essentially will have a mulligan rookie year this year a little bit. And I brought up the jet scrimmage, mm-hmm. the the, the inter squad practice. Colin Johnson got hurt that practice. Yes, he was in line to be a starter, right? Because he had overtaken the other guy that was here that has mm-hmm. now moved on. So you look at man, they're getting the big receiver uh, back healthy that can get down the field. And I just hope that we don't see what we saw last year. Right. Knock on wood, because these guys with Beavers was playing exceptionally well. Johnson was playing well, and those two guys go down, but it allowed other guys to step up. But I'm also excited to see. You know, some of these guys that they brought in that they had on the practice squad to really, OK, here's your opportunity. What did you learn in that red shirt year in mm-hmm. this program? Emery Hunt, thank you as always for the excellent insight. Giants rookie minicamp underway here at Quest Diagnostics Training Center in East Rutherford. The Giants Huddle Podcast is brought to you by PSENG, energy efficiency for game time and anytime. Visit PSEG.com slash Giants for discounts, rebates and home energy assessments. From CBS and FootballGamePlan.com, he's Emery Hunt. I'm Madeline Burke from Giants.com. We'll see you next time.